Hello and welcome back. Again looking at Sega Mega Drive Power Tips Volume 3. I thought I'd try doing it with my phone just to see how things work out. I felt that the head cam was a little bit jerky. So here we've got Gunship 2000, a game I'm not too familiar with. But by the looks of this screenshot, it certainly looks like something I would probably enjoy. So it seems to be a mix of viewpoints from what I can see. Obviously some sort of helicopter based game. So next, an all time classic. One for the treasure fans here. Gunstar Heroes. You can't go far wrong. You really can't go far wrong. As far as multiplayer games go, there is a lot to like here. Some fantastic, imaginative, colourful, creative graphics, enemies, sounds, you name it, it's all here. And a pretty in-depth guide. And I have played for a lot of these levels in the past. And you get to this really confusing board game type section, which I found to be highly annoying. But I did eventually get through it. And you face a number of bosses and God knows what else craziness. But definitely a game well worth checking out. So here we go. Madden NFL 94. Believe it or not, I've got the Japanese version of this. And I'm quite partial to a bit of John Madden, I must say. I don't think it's a bad series of games at all. Especially on the Mega Drive. So... Once you get into it, it's not a bad simulation of the sport. So here we go, Dr. Robin up Robotonics, a mean, mean machine. Now obviously, this was a different game in Japan. I'm trying my hardest to remember what that was, but I am struggling somewhat. It's completely passing my brain, but uh, I'm sure you all know what it is. Never really been a fan of that, to be honest, compared to the Tetris on the Game Boy. I found almost every other attempt at the genre to be somewhat disappointing. So here we go, Micro Machines. Just uploaded a 35 minute gameplay video of this, but what a classic. I don't think I need to say much more about this, because... I have blurted on and on about it over the last couple of days, but classic, absolute classic. you got to get it, you got to get it. Much like this, NBA Jam. First time I ever experienced this was on the Super Nintendo. A friend of mine hired it out. It just amazed me at the time, that, you know, the, the mega dunks you could do, the flaming ball, the way you could smash the backboard. It all seemed pretty revolutionary. And still a fantastic game. My own tournament edition myself on the Mega Drive. I've owned all of them in the past, or both versions. But uh, you can't go wrong with either. NHL Hockey 94. Often said to be the best of the series. I'm not sure if it was 93 I probably spent the most time with, but you can't beat a bit of EA Hockey. Really was a fantastic game. F117 Nightstorm. This is one of EA's sort of simulational flight sim games. And I guess at the time when these come out, they were pretty mind blown, really, considering the hardware. There was no extra chips on board the cartridges, as far as I know. And it was almost 3D flight simulational quality. Always takes me back to the Krypton Factor. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but when you had to land the plane on the runway at the end there always something I wished I could have had a go at but uh, a missed opportunity for certain so Pete Sampras tennis challenge here we go now my own experience with Pete Sampras was Pete Sampras 96 and it was a great game in four player mode but my word I struggled going back to this recently trying to play it I just I've just lost my tennis mojo I think it's not for me anymore PGA Euro Tour Golf. I don't know if this was in between 2 and 3 or after 3, but I did own this back in the day. You can't go wrong with PGA Tour Golf. You honestly can't. My favourite is probably number 3, but 
any game well worth your time. Pugsy, another late release. I think a lot of these releases, this is probably like 94, something like that. Um, not a great deal of experience with Pugsy. I know it's a sort of puzzle game. I know it originated on the Amiga. Probably not my kind of thing, but I think quite well regarded by many. RBA, RBI Baseball 94. Interestingly owned this game and the cartridge label was upside down. Um, I did sell it because for me, Baseball 2020 is, is all you need. And even then, I still don't fully understand it. So, Rocket Knight Adventures. Now, this is one hell of a game. If I was to recommend any platform game on the Mega Drive, this would definitely be in the top two or three. For me, this was just phenomenal. The graphics. This was Konami at the finest on Sega's system. And, you know, it's not even going to do it justice here, but some of the variety on the levels and things. Just absolutely brilliant. Love Rocket Knight Adventures. Everybody should at least try it out. So Skitchin, yes. I was a massive Road Rash fan. I was a massive Skitchin fan. It is quite difficult going back to this. It's um, not the easiest game to play. But uh, there is actually a video on my channel. Um, I still rate it. I think if you're a big fan of the Road Rash and the whole Electronic Arts engine... It's well worth investing in. It's a snake rattle and roll. I did have this one back in the day. I don't know. I can't remember now if I owned it for a few weeks or just rented it out. But obviously, it was originally on the NES. Quite a decent game, by all regards. I certainly enjoyed it. I think I had the Game Boy version. It was called Sneaky Snakes, and uh, that was also very enjoyable. Sonic Free. I mean, I've only recently started to give this game a chance, but. It is really, really pushing the Mega Drive to its limits. And uh, some of the effects and graphics are just absolutely mind-blowing for a 16-bit machine. Very creative. It really went all out there. And it's certainly shown. So obviously this is a bit of a guide to some of the later levels. I've not got this far. I'm stuck on a boss, I think, on about... The fourth set of levels, something like that. So here we have Sonic Spinball, and I wasn't a fan of this, and I've had it since. I'm still not a fan of it. I think there's very much a divided opinion on it. I would say if you're a big Sonic fan, you probably find some enjoyment in this, but for me, it, it just wasn't on par with the platform games. Street Fighter 2, Special Championship Edition. What more can you say? When this came out in the Mega Drive, it certainly shut Super Nintendo owners up. In retrospect, it's probably not as good as a Super Nintendo controller. I'll even say that the Super Nintendo controller is probably better for playing Street Fighter than the Mega Drive 6 button pad due to the shoulder buttons. But still, it was it was amazing to see this on Sega's system. And you can't beat classic Street Fighter. You know, a game often copied but very rarely equaled. I'm going into some detail on this particular game. Streets of Rage 3, so that shows how late this, you know, series 3 of this Sega Mega Drive's Power Tips book was. I have the Japanese version of this, I quite like it. I also quite like Golden Axe 3, which I recently played, so, you know, maybe I've just got some sort of addiction to side scroll and beat em ups at the moment, but uh, a lot to like, I think. The music's a bit strange, but. Look past that, the improvements in the gameplay, and there's certainly something here for everyone. Now, there's some dispute over which is the best version. I think a lot of people think the Japanese version is due to the inclusion of some levels that were cut from the European and American releases. I'm not too clued up on it. I've spent most of my time playing Streets of Rage 2, but it is nice to have it in the collection. So here is probably the main reason I dug these guides back out, Subterranea. I was stuck on level 3. Fantastic game and this guide is absolutely invaluable. Toe Jam and Earl 2, Panic on Fungatron. I remember getting this from the video shop back when it was released. And just 
being completely blown away that it wasn't like the first game. I, I must say I was I was really disappointed, but going back and playing it over the last few years, it is actually a really decent game. So quite a, a big spread here on it. I'll try and hurry on through because uh, I've got some spaghetti on the boil in the kitchen next door. I need to get back to attending to that. So virtual racing, my word. This this really brings it all together for me because when I got virtual racing, I got it from a video shop in Hinkley, actually the town where Tootie lives, and I traded in Turtles Tournament Fighter, Rocket Knight Adventures, and I believe maybe Sonic 3 to get this game because it was 70 quid. And... Wow, at the time, this was like the ultimate arcade machine. The fact it was even coming to the Mega Drive was just unbelievable. It almost seemed like an April Fool's joke, but when it arrived, oh, God, I was so pleased with this. I was so pleased with this. And I know looking at it now, it's not the greatest of conversions, but back then, I believe 1994, 95, this was the dog's bollocks. So, there we go. Wiz and Liz. Don't know much about this. Another Psygnosis number on the Mega Drive. Probably pretty decent. World Cup USA 94. If it's not Sensible Soccer, I'm not interested. Zombies. I do own this one. Another Konami game that's uh, seen a fair amount of censorship when it was brought over to Europe. It's still a decent title. And uh, the best of the rest, which there's often some really good tips in here. So I'll see if I can just find anything. Obviously got level codes there for the Immortal. That's a tough game, so if you want to get a little bit further, there's some codes for you. Loads of goodness here, really. Ranger X to skip the level. Go on. There you go. An infuriating game, but a welcome cheat there. And much more, so that's it. I'm going to polish off my dinner. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully, upload some more videos soon.